So welcome to the Daily on Friday. My name is Michael Schimke. I'm the CEO of Scalefree. We have the session here every Friday, 11 o'clock um, Central European Standard Time to allow you, the audience, to ask questions about Data Vault, any data-driven applications, cloud computing, MP stuff, that kind of stuff, right? Um, every question is allowed. You can use the chat here in the client. Um, if you want to raise a, raise a live question, um, you can use the Q&A function in the client. You can just raise your hand. I will give you uh, your voice. Um, don't miss that. And you can also use a form, which I show you after today's session, where you can essentially uh, type in your question, upload maybe some uh, whiteboard pictures, and uh, I would uh, essentially prepare a slide for your question, such a short one. Um, it's time boxed. Uh, if you receive multiple questions, it's cherry picked, time boxed 10 minutes roughly. And if there will be no questions at all, I will talk about the cluster. But I'm quite busy at the moment, so I'm 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 glad that you, uh, well, I don't have time for the cluster, that's my problem. So I'm glad that you're sending questions in. Um, let me just share the today's question here. Um, so this is about data mining um, in the data 2.0 architecture. Um, so this client here or this user has essentially a data mining model that should be applied during information delivery in the information yeah, in the information delivery essentially when producing information marks they want to they want to consume or use results from a data mining model. So where, where does it fit into the data 2.0 architecture? From a from a data so there's an easy answer and a more complicated answer. Let's say that the easy answer is from a data 2.0 perspective, it's quite easy actually. A data mining model is just business logic, right? So it, it typically belongs into the business world. The only thing is uh, most data mining models will be external code. So you, you typically don't do this in a SQL view because the, the, the SQL functionalities are not there. There might be some engines like in um, SQL Server, but also Postgres and, and um, um, like uh, Greenplum and so on, derivatives. You might have data mining extensions but then those are typically functions that will populate data into tables. So, but typically you have some external script or some external SQL code that you, and typically it's Python code to be honest, um, typically have some Python code that consumes data from the raw data vault, maybe from the business vault, feeds that into a data mining model, and then the results from the data mining model will be written back into a table in the business vault. That's the best design in my opinion. You could, just like any other business rule, apply the business rule also to the information mart, but that would mean that you have to essentially materialize your information marks and, uh, and limit your, reuse, your reusability of your results from, from data mining algorithm or from a model. And that's why typically you don't do that. So typically data is being stored into a um, business world table essentially. So that's the easy answer. It's just business logic, just deal with it and any other external logic, whatever it is, right? The more complicated answer is that um, if you have a auditing requirement, the idea is that in the business world, but also for the information mart, if you have a materialized business world entity, you can always truncate the table and then rebuild the table using the same raw, unmodified raw data and unmodified business logic. The, the, the results must be exactly the same. If not, you got a problem with your unmodified raw data or with your unmodified business logic. Somebody modified this, right, in the meantime. So that's number one. So that's the requirement for a business world. Always be able to truncate a table if you, if you materialize something or rebuild a materialized view for that matter. But you have to be able to rebuild the business world entity and coming up with the exact same results for those records until the same load date in the past, right? That's the basic idea. So the problem is in many data mining applications or data mining models, um, there's, some, there's some randomness involved as well. So you, 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 when you run the same model multiple times for the same data, it's not guaranteed that you get exactly the same result from the, from the engine. Um, well, you can control that. First of all, the randomness depends on the random number generator. And you could use a seed to control the, the randomness to some extent, or use a pseudo-randomness, uh, random generator, pseudo-random pseudo number generator, where you essentially uh, provide the same random numbers all the time, right? So it just looks random, but it's not. It's a static list essentially of random numbers that might be also not. Just to make sure you get the same randomness for every call essentially. That should lead then to the same results again. Um, or what you could do is in other cases, when um, you train a model on ad hoc or something, you could also, and that's what I would do, store the parameters of your support vector machines, for example, like the support vectors or the, um, the, the hidden layers in a neural network. You just store those parameters so when you when you rebuild the model, you don't have to retrain the model, you just rebuild the model for the same data essentially again, right? 
So that's, that's what you have to control essentially to make it audible. That the same inputs into the same model will lead to the same outputs. That's the requirement essentially. Um, that, so it's not, it doesn't work always, to be honest, right? So not all, not all data mining models will work this way, but uh, if you can, go for it. That's the idea. Um, right, and then, but again, it's just a um, business logic in a business world in that sense. You just control the model a bit more to make sure you can repeat the results essentially for the same inputs at the same time, right? Results might change over time based on a load time stamp, but for the same load time stamp, for the same record, I would expect the same output essentially. That's the idea. All right, so that's the more complicated answer, but it's, it's possible. Um, all right, so yeah, it's just business logic. That's, that's the short answer. So if you have, so thanks for the answer. Uh, thanks for the question, sorry. And thanks for, here's your answer. Um, if you have a question like this, use this form here, sfr.ee slash dbfriday. That's where you can essentially submit your question, um, type it in and maybe upload some pictures if you want of your team, of your whiteboard, no matter what. Maybe some model if you want to publish that or, or if you want to submit that. And um, don't forget, we have more webinars than just the day about Friday. There's a webinar on uh, Westgate and one webinar on DBT on a monthly basis. Um, check those out. They all end up on YouTube as well, right? So um, we we publish them on your favorite video platform, essentially. And um, yeah, you can watch them there as well. If you have any questions until Friday, if you can't wait for your answer, you can also check out the Data Vault Innovators Community, DVIC, that we came up with um, together with, um, uh, with Ignition Data. Um, and uh, yeah, that's essentially a forum-based um, Q&A system where you can um, uh, raise questions, get answers immediately, and then also um, check out some um, white paper sometimes, solutions and so on. All right, cool. So um, yeah, thanks for joining today. Hope to see you next Friday, same time, same spot, and um, enjoy your free weekend now. Thank you guys. Thanks. <laughs>